If so, please explain if there is any information in the paper above about how greenhouse gases are suppressed. In the presented paper, various strategies for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and hydrogen production using renewable energy sources are outlined as follows. 1. Electrochemical Method Description Develop and commercialize electrolysis-based hydrogen production technology, utilizing electricity generated from renewable sources. This method involves using renewable electricity to electrolyze water into hydrogen and oxygen, representing a completely carbon-free hydrogen production process, often referred to as green hydrogen. Remark, this method is considered a fully carbon-neutral approach as it eliminates carbon dioxide emissions during the production of hydrogen. 2. Thermochemical Method Description Advance and implement solar thermal hydrogen production technology, utilizing solar heat to drive reactions between water and chemical substances for hydrogen generation. This method operates without the need for electricity and allows for the reuse or storage of carbon dioxide produced during the high temperature water splitting process. Remark, the thermochemical method provides an alternative path to hydrogen production without direct reliance on electricity and offers the potential for carbon dioxide recycling or storage. 3. Biological method. Description, develop and commercialize hydrogen production technology using biomass fermentation to generate hydrogen. This approach leverages the carbon cycling characteristics of biomass to minimize the net emissions of carbon dioxide during the process. Remark, by utilizing the carbon cycling properties of biomass, this method minimizes the overall carbon dioxide emissions associated with hydrogen production. 4. Photochemical method. Description, advance and deploy solar-driven hydrogen production technology, utilizing sunlight to induce reactions between water and chemical substances for hydrogen production. This method is similar to electrochemical approaches but does not use electrolytes, and during the water splitting process, it avoids emitting carbon dioxide by using photocatalysts. Remark, the photochemical method shares similarities with electrochemical approaches but eliminates carbon dioxide emissions during water splitting by utilizing photocatalysts without the need for electrolytes. While each of these methods has its own set of advantages and challenges, they are considered promising avenues for enhancing the efficiency and reducing greenhouse gas emissions and hydrogen production using renewable energy sources. If so, please explain if there is any information in the paper above about how greenhouse gases are suppressed. In the presented paper, various approaches for greenhouse gas reduction and hydrogen production using renewable energy sources are outlined as follows. 1. Electrochemical Method Description, development and commercialization of electrolysis-based hydrogen production technology utilizing electricity generated from renewable sources. This method involves the electrolysis of water into hydrogen and oxygen, emitting no carbon dioxide, a completely carbon-free hydrogen production process, often referred to as green hydrogen. Remark, this approach signifies a carbon-neutral process, as it eliminates carbon dioxide emissions during hydrogen production. 2. Thermochemical Method Description, advancement and widespread implementation of solar thermal hydrogen production technology, utilizing solar heat to drive reactions between water and chemical substances to generate hydrogen. This method operates without the need for electricity and allows for the reuse or storage of carbon dioxide produced during high temperature water splitting. Remark, the thermochemical method provides an alternative path to hydrogen production without direct reliance on electricity and offers the potential for carbon dioxide recycling or storage. 3. Biological Method Description, development and commercialization of hydrogen production technology using biomass fermentation to generate hydrogen. This approach leverages the carbon cycling characteristics of biomass to minimize carbon dioxide emissions during the process. Remark, by harnessing the carbon cycling properties of biomass, this method minimizes the net carbon dioxide emissions associated with hydrogen production. 4. Photochemical Method Description, advancement and deployment of solar-driven hydrogen production technology, utilizing sunlight to induce reactions between water and chemical substances to produce hydrogen. This method is similar to electrochemical approaches but does not employ electrolytes and, during the water splitting process, avoids carbon dioxide emissions through the use of photocatalysts. Remark, the photochemical method shares similarities with electrochemical approaches but eliminates carbon dioxide emissions during water splitting by utilizing photocatalysts without electrolytes. These methods, each with its own set of advantages and challenges, show promise as efficient and environmentally friendly strategies for hydrogen production using renewable energy sources. Are there any downsides to this method? Doesn't solid polymer mean that alkali metals or metals are used to suppress chlorine gas? 
So isn't the efficiency still low? The drawbacks of solid polymer electrolyte water electrolysis are as follows. 1. High cost due to noble metal catalysts. Issue, the use of noble metal catalysts, such as platinum and iridium, results in high costs. These metals are globally scarce and expensive. Developing low-cost catalyst alternatives is a crucial research challenge. Remark, the expense associated with noble metal catalyst poses a significant economic challenge, emphasizing the need for the development of cost-effective alternatives. 2. Requirement for corrosion-resistant materials. Issue, the strong acidity of the electrolyte demands materials with high corrosion resistance. The pH of the electrolyte is close to zero, causing corrosion in many metals or composite materials. Remark, improvements in materials to prevent or minimize corrosion are essential to enhance the durability and longevity of the electrolysis system. 3. Poisoning of platinum catalyst by carbon monoxide. Issue, the toxicity of carbon monoxide poses a problem as it strongly binds to the active sites of platinum catalysts, leading to a reduction in catalytic activity. Remark, mitigating this issue requires strategies such as increasing the purity of water used in electrolysis or modifying the structure and composition of the catalyst. 4. Lower efficiency despite higher current density. Issue, while solid polymer electrolyte water electrolysis offers an advantage with a current density over four times higher than alkaline water electrolysis, the required voltage for electrolysis remains higher than the theoretical minimum. Remark, enhancing efficiency necessitates optimization of catalyst activity and durability, ion conductivity of the electrolyte, and the interfacial area between the electrode and electrolyte. In summary, the solid polymer electrolyte water electrolysis method exhibits advantages such as higher current density, contributing to increased efficiency, reduced cell size, and enhanced hydrogen purity. However, the existing challenge lies in the higher than theoretical minimum voltage required for electrolysis, prompting the need for optimization in catalyst activity, durability, ion conductivity, and electrode-electrolyte interface. So, if carbon, nitrogen, silicon, etc., which are not expensive precious metals, combine with chlorine, is there a high possibility of creating an extremely explosive compound? Yes, that's a possibility. When carbon, nitrogen, silicon, and chlorine combine, they typically form chlorides, which are highly oxidizing and reducing agents, making them highly explosive. For example, tetrachloromethane, CCL4, formed by the combination of carbon and chlorine, is a potent oxidizing agent. Nitrogen trichloride, NCL3, resulting from the combination of nitrogen and chlorine, is a strong reducing agent. Silicon tetrachloride, CCL4, formed by the combination of silicon and chlorine, reacts with water, generating heat. These compounds can be sensitive to shock or high temperatures, making them potentially explosive, and should be handled with caution. However, if you use potassium, it becomes a fatal poison called cyanide, and if you use a metal such as regular iron rather than an alkali metal, it corrodes severely, so it seems that you face the difficult problem of having to use precious metals. Absolutely. When electrolyzing hydrogen chloride, HCl, selecting the appropriate electrode and electrolyte is crucial. Using alkali metals like potassium may lead to the formation of highly toxic compounds such as potassium chlorate. On the other hand, employing common metals like iron may result in severe corrosion. The use of noble metals can be expensive, and there is a risk of poisoning by carbon monoxide. To address these challenges, it is essential to develop low-cost non-noble metal catalysts or corrosion-resistant composite materials. This approach aims to find solutions that balance cost-effectiveness, corrosion resistance, and avoidance of toxic byproducts, especially when electrolyzing hydrogen chloride.